You're very welcome along to another video from Gundog and Fly. So, um, I recently posted a few images of a fly on Instagram and it got um, a lot of reaction and a lot of people asking me what it's called, how do you fish it, all that sort of stuff. Um, the fly, I suppose, is what I, it's what I call high vis parachute. And if you struggle a bit, maybe, to see flies in the distance, or if you struggle in particular to see flies in, say, broken choppy water, well, this can be a great aid in that respect. And not only that, it's a very, very effective fly as well. It's a dry fly, obviously, and. Um, it's very easy to see at a distance and it's also relatively easy to see in broken choppy water and in different kinds of light because you, you'll find um, that in particular light conditions, particular colours work better. So for instance, yellow might be easily seen today and maybe tomorrow it could be red or blue or whatever. It all depends on the light that's around at the time you're fishing that will determine what, what particular color can be seen at a given in a given lighting condition so this kind of covers all the bases if you like um, its principal constituent outside of the feathers and the hooks etc is closed cell foam and what I do is I use closed cell foam in different colors I'll show you some examples um, throughout the video and using the various different colors for the different lighting conditions. I hope you can kind of follow what I'm trying to, to express here. Um, so the tying of the fly is moderately difficult, so maybe not a complete beginner's fly, but anybody with any kind of reasonable experience of tying flies should be able to manage it. There's a couple of little tricky bits, but it's not beyond the scope of most people to tie the fly. So uh, I'll get to it, and uh, this is how it's done. Okay, so, right, basically the materials required for this are relatively basic. Tine silk I'm using is um, uni thread 80 and it's primrose yellow. Um, closed cell foam I have here in three different colours. Right, now there are many, many different colours, but I'm going to, I use principally these three. And I tie the fly, say, I tie a half dozen with orange, half a dozen with um, yellow, half a dozen with, this is a sort of a chartreuse or luminescent green, if you like. And I do, say, a half dozen of each colour. And the hook I'm going to use is this one here. It's a curved hook. Now, there's... A lot of different varieties of hooks. This, these are known by various um, names, but basically, uh, clink hammer size 14. Now, they, these particular hooks are made by Partridge, but um, any sort of curved hook will do the trick, and it needs to be light but strong. So now, starting off, start off as I usually start here. A little bit back from the eye and now I'm going down in touching turns um, with the thread all the way till I go around the bend. Now I'm using primrose yellow for this fly but you can vary the body colour to suit whatever fly you're trying to represent. Now, this is a black permanent marker. And I'm just going to mark the thread with it. And now I'm coming back up along in open turns. And this will give the ribbed or segmented body effect Now note where I stop, I'm quite a ways back from 
the eye of the hook and it's important that you stay back quite a bit. Now the next thing, the hackle. Now these are genetic hackles. It's important that you would use good quality hackles for this fly. This is a genetic badger hackle. Right? Um, for those of you who don't know, these hackles are genetically produced. Chickens don't naturally produce feathers of this length or quality. And uh, they've been engineered basically to produce feathers like these. And uh, they're very, very good but they don't come cheap. Anyway, that's the hackle, right? Before I tie in the hackle, I'm going to show you what I do with this close style foam. I'm going to use the chartreuse color here, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it. Now the diameter of the piece you need are what I would describe roughly as the diameter of a match, say a match is for lighting fires, basically the same diameter as a match. And then I hold it there like that. Now you need to be careful when you're tying it in. It, um, if you put too much pressure at this point, you'll actually cut the foam. So what I do is I put in three or four turns just that hold it in place. And now this part here, I'm going to tie down tight on it to hold it in place. So I haven't applied massive pressure at the beginning because I would just cut the foam and then it would be useless obviously. So there we are, that's the foam in place, so lift it vertically, tie in front of it. Now, now I'm going to go around it and I'm heading vertically up the way. Each turn of tread is on top of the preceding one. And I create a little groove like this here. And this is where the hackle will be tied in. So now I'll come back down and rest just here in front. Now the hackle. We tie in our hackle and make sure that it can't escape, give it a good few turns so it can't go any place. And now I'm going to climb up along that little groove anti-clockwise this direction until I reach the top of the groove and then I'm going to come back down. So you have a combination of roughly six or eight turns and when you get right to the bottom this is the tricky bit for a beginner now. A beginner will find this part pretty difficult. You need to get the thread in under the hackle to catch this. So that requires a little bit of dexterity and maybe a little experience that a beginner obviously won't have. When you have it caught, you can grab everything there like that and lift it with your thumb and index finger carefully and that will expose the hackle so that you can Put a good few turns on it. I have four or five on there now, so that should be more than adequate. And now, I'm just going to cut the hackle. There we go. Now, I like to dub the front. This is dubbing that I make up myself. Uh, any of you who've been watching my videos for a while will know that most of this dubbing is comprised of hair from a German Shepherd and a few other bits and bobs. But anyway, um, I'm going to use this little bit of grey sparkly stuff here. I'm going to dub that on there. Again, experience will teach you how much you need to put on in order to create a um, nice little tapered thorax and head. Again, grab all the hackles, pull them out of the way best you can and on goes the dubbing. I'm coming up here to the front. Now any little pieces of hackle that are right at the front you need to trim them off because they can get in the way of putting your leader in the eye of the hook. Now whip finish
Cut that. And now carefully cut the foam, leaving just enough. And you'll be very surprised at how far away you can actually see that little piece of foam. Now, like I said, it depends on the lighting conditions. That green works on some days, the red works on other, or the orange works on other days, and the yellow works on other days as well. So, um, if you tie a few in each colour, you can't go wrong. So, um, I'm just going to put up a photograph here now of a few examples in the different colours. So that's it folks, that's the uh, high-vis parachute as I like to call it, and um, if your eyesight isn't what it used to be, or if you struggle to see flies at any distance, or if you have trouble in the varying lighting conditions, tie up a few of these and uh, it'll likely solve the problem. So I hope you found that uh, interesting and uh, maybe even instructive. So that's it folks for today. Um, I'll be giving these um, a little bit of a trial maybe tomorrow and uh, if I get any good footage you'll be the next to see it. So Shinawila Wumsa and Love, that's it for me today. Um, hope you, thanks for joining me and I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, consider uh, subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. Like the video, share it to anybody you think might have failing eyesight. <laughs> and um, Shinawil, Shin Shin. Um me a kind to reach live on Ker or Ella. Either on Galin, Biggie Slain, August, Biggie Egg Eskracht. Slang of oil.